All right, hello and welcome to Online iCode with Youth Tech Inc. So at this point, you should have already created your free online account through bitsbox.com. And so if you haven't, go ahead and do that real fast. And when you do, you'll get to a screen that looks just like the one that you see right now. So you should see this virtual tablet. Um, and so for our first step here, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through um, projects number one, two, three, and four. And so these are your online activities. And so the first thing that we're going to do to get to these online activities, and again, that's um, projects one through four in a single video here, is we're going to click on new app. And it's going to say, do you have a bits box book or card with you? No, not right now. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with these online activities. And so we're going to start off on the left-hand side with Dance and Hell. We're going to click on that. Now, Bitsbox is this service that's going to help you walk through some programming. And so what it does is it gives you this hint, this little um, area right here on the right-hand side of what you're going to type in. So what we're going to do is we're going to click to start typing here, and we're just going to write down exactly what it says and spelling here is important um, and punctuation and then when you're done you hit the green play button and oops it looks like we have an error somewhere so let's take a look at that all right so this five needs to be inside the parentheses so again spelling um, and where you put things is very important and then it gives us a new line to type out here we hit pl play again and now if we tap on our robot our robot is dancing. So this is a very, very simple program. It's two lines. It's called Dance and Hell. Um, and all that you're doing here is you're just making your robot dance around. Um, and so once you're done with that, you can hit the home button. You go to new app. You click on so long homework. All right. So now we're starting off with our second online activity. So same deal here where you are filling in um, what the website says. You hit the play button and typing in the next one now. Hit play again and we get yet another line here. And we type all of this out and keep going. And feel free to pause the video if you need to. And we've got one more line here for our sound. All right, there we go. So, um, as you can see, this is a game where you get to basically flush your homework into a black hole. Um, it's fun, but now at this point we get to start to examine some of the components that make up our programming here. So, um, Bitsbox is this online tool that uses a programming language that's this mix between what we call HTML and JavaScript. And so it's this kind of more fundamental language. Um, and so there's a couple things um, to, to point out. So when you're programming, a lot of times your text, um, it changes color. So traditionally, when you write something like in a Word document, um, your text will be black. But here we see that we have some black text, we have some purple text, we have some some blue text, and so all of these things have um, have different, uh, uh, I guess, ways that they support your programming and your coding. So, for example, your blue text here is for values. You'll notice that all of your numbers are in blue, and so anytime that you use a number in programming, programmers refer to that as values. Um, similarly, for your um, your pink text here. These are going to be your strings. So these are these are like names of different things, and you'll notice that they're also inside of these apostrophes. There, uh, these are parameters for your programming. And so, um, so your your pink text here is string. So it refers to saved artifacts for your program. So for example, artwork. This black hole. This design here. This graph 
affect this image is art. Uh, an artist designed it. It's an image. It's a background. Um, so is your homework image. So is your is your uh, flush sound is also an artifact for your programming. It's a sound that somebody created. Um, and then your your black text is kind of like filling in the rest. Um, another interesting thing to point out here is we have two lines where we have equal signs. So in, our, in line two and in line three. So those would be examples of what's called variables. So anytime you set one value equal to something else, you're creating a variable. You're creating a shell for that value. So instead of typing out 3000, we're just going to say that 3000 means time. 3000 equals time. And instead of having to type out this long string of characters, we're just going to sum it up as H instead. We're giving it a shorter value, and that's what a variable does. It substitutes the value of something for something else. Um, and we'll talk about uh, var variables more here in our other online activities, as well as in some of our other activities as well. So we're going to go back home now, and we're going to go ahead and click on New App. And so the next one, the third one that's popping up here is block craft. So let's go ahead and complete that one. Again, we have our hints. Here's our hints. We hit run. And then we get this function that we have to type out here. And we'll type all of this out. Now it's important, you'll notice I'm um, adding some spaces in as well. So there's spaces between your equal signs that you'll need to add, um, and adding those is important. If you don't, you might get an error message. So ink.tap equals pop. All right, and now we get to draw on our tablet. So let's, let's draw a square here. This is not the best square ever, but there we go. There's a square. All right, so let's talk about the programming now. So again, we have what we can see to be values with our numbers. We have strings with our, um, our different artifacts here. So we have our grid, which is a background that somebody created, and our cubes, which is also another graphic that somebody created. Here's a new thing. Um, from lines 2 to 5, we have what's called a function. Um, and so we're designing this function um, kind of by ourselves. So here's here's how the function works. First we're declaring what is the function measuring? Well it's measuring when we drag our cursor on the screen. That's what the function's measuring. And what it says is when the function of dragging our cursor occurs, it's going to perform what is inside of these parameters here. And then in lines of three to four is what's supposed to occur when we um, when we drag our cursor and that's called the argument so inside of our parameters is we have our argument here which is what we're writing into our function um, so we have actually for our um, our function is pretty basic it's um, it's just two lines here and so um, it's ink equals stamp um, cube 3 x y 75 so we're setting a variable there and we're saying that when we tap on that ink to pop it. And so that's when if you click on any of the the squares that have been drawn here, if you click on them, you can actually delete them. Um, just like that. So um, pretty easy. You can draw stuff, but you can also delete stuff as well. So okay. Um, and so outside of your values and your strings, um, there's also the this X and this Y. And so well, what does that mean? So the 75 here, that actually denotes your size. So for example, if I change 75 to 300 and drew, oh, well, all of a sudden it's way, way, way bigger. So that's how you can make things bigger. Um, now the X and Y actually makes it so that when you click, it draws it wherever your cursor is. So if you notice at the top, there's this X along the top here, and there's this Y along the side. And so that just means X and Y is sort of the, the placeholder for just go to wherever your cursor is at on the screen. So that's why it, it clicks. It shows up wherever you place your cursor at. So that's, um, that's a nice thing to have. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete some of the uh, blocks here. Perfect. 
So we can make this back to its original size. We'll make this 75 again. Um, other things that you can do is you can replace cube 3 with cube 4. And now this is a different colored cube. Um, you could also not do cubes all together. For instance, our last one with the, the robot, we can try that out. Here Now it's just uh, drawing a bunch of robots. So these are the types of things that you can change in your program. Um, instead of grid 2, you could do wood. So now we're drawing our robots on wood. So that's just another example of how you can customize your program. So um, feel free to play around with that. And then when you're ready to move on, we'll go ahead and click home once again. Go to new app. This time we're going to open up Blockcraft. And so, um, oh, we are, that was the one that we were just in. That's my bad. We'll go to new app again. And so we're ready to move on to Red Racer now. And so for Red Racer, same deal here. We're um, typing in what's inside of our hints. Here's our size. Equals 150. Speed equals 500. C equals stamp. Parentheses. Car 8. Size. There we go. And here is our function. And this is a new function, just like our last one was. And so we're typing in our position now, and then typing in our variable speed, and putting in our position again. And let's test this out. Okay, so now ideally what we're, we should be able to do here is if we just drag our cursor, our car will follow our uh, cursor here. So let's, let's um, start by digesting our function, which occurs from lines 4 through 8. So um, our first thing that we do in line 4 is, well, what do we have here? We have a variable. How do we know this? It, well, it's because we have our equal sign again. Um, so we're setting the letter C equal to all of this other stuff on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So C equals stamp car 8 size. Um, and then at line 5 all the way through line 8, we actually set the function. So we're using the same function as before, function drag. So when we drag our cursor, but we have a different argument now. So now we're saying that the car needs to move to wherever the cursor is. That would be x and y. And it needs to move at the designated speed, which is 500. So if we wanted to make that faster, such as 1500, we could easily do that, and actually that uh, that makes it slower, so let's try 100 instead. And now the car moves really fast. So let's change that back to 500, and you could also make the car bigger if you wanted to. So now that's a really big car, and you could make it significantly smaller if you wanted to as well. So now that's a little toy car moving around. Um, so these are all things that you can change. And of course, you can change your parking lot again. You can change car 8. Those are your artifacts that you can change, your strings. Um, and then for your line 7, so that your line 6 was actually moving it, your line 7 changes where the car is facing. So as you can see here, I can move it in a circle. Um, it would be staying in one position. It would only angle itself one way if we did not have the aim line in here. So if I deleted this real fast and I hit run, you can see how the car, it doesn't change where it's angled towards, where it's pointing towards. Well, that's not how cars move. It's moving side to side. Cars need to turn. So we'll go ahead and add that line back in there. Hit play again, make our car normal size. Oh, there we go. All right, back to normal. So that's exactly what we want, and that is Red Racer. So again, feel free to try and play around with some of these options, and then we'll go ahead and go back home, and then we're going to go ahead and click on New App again. 
Um, so we've covered at this point all of our four online activities. So feel free to um, play around with your online activities, try changing some values, try changing some artifacts, um, try, try uh, using some elements from one app in another. So we didn't have any functions in our dance and how, but perhaps there's something that we could do with our dance and how. So maybe as our robot dances, maybe you want to drag the robot from side to side. So that those are definitely options that you can play around with. Um, and then when you're ready to move on, feel free to jump into the project number five video and we will see you there.